Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about print on demand everything. So if that is a subject that you're interested in, please do stick around. So in today's video, I wanted to show you guys how you can create this design right here. Now this one says I wear gray for Parkinson's awareness, but you can use the technique that I'm going to show you um, for anything. So it does not just have to be for this. But if you are interested in this style of design, go ahead and stick around. So here I am on Canva's home page. I am going to be designing uh, for a t-shirt today. So we'll go ahead and select custom size in the top right hand corner. And we'll pick 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. That will pull up a blank page. Now I do like to optimize my designs uh, for darker colored shirts. So I'm gonna go ahead and select a background color of black. So I'll go up to the top left where you have this little background color box, click that, and then I'm gonna select black for my background color. Now for this design, I'm gonna be doing one for Parkinson's Awareness Month um, that is in April. So coming up here, so now's the perfect time to be designing for that. Uh, the ribbon color for Parkinson's, by the way, is a light gray kind of silvery color that is for the gray matter of the brain in case you're curious um and so what we're going to do is something really simple but kind of more elegant looking it's going to say i wear gray um for parkinson's awareness and so i can start really easy by just pulling up a text box i'm going to do this in all caps by the way and i'm going to put i wear gray Make that nice and big along the top. And I'm going to pull one more up. Oops, that should be gray four. Sorry, four. <laughs> there we go. I wear gray four. And then this one is going to say Parkinson's awareness. So I can do Parkinson's or Parkinson's awareness either way. Let's see how. I'll see how small that's going to make it. Not too much smaller. I'll play with it. We'll find out. Okay, so we're going to start with this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select some fonts here too. So I want it to be a little bit more bold and a little bit more narrow. Lots of different fonts you can choose from. I'm going to go with one called, let's see, I didn't spell these right. Statch. Okay, <clears throat> so the font I picked is one called Stat. Statliches. Always weird name. Statliches. Okay, so that's the font I'm going to go with for both of these. It is a nice narrow font, but it is also nice and bold. And so that is one of the things I like about it is I can make these nice and big so that it is easy to read. And so that will work right there. And so um, for this design here, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put a silver um, or gray, I guess, ribbon in the middle and then some flourishes make it look really pretty. Um, FYI, you can do this technique on any, you know, awareness month. They all have their own different ribbon colors. And so you can obviously look that up. Some of them will also have other symbols associated with them. So for Parkinson's, it is a gray ribbon, but you should know it is also a red tulip. So if you were doing something with a red tulip, that would work too. Matter of fact, we might even be able to incorporate the red tulip into the pattern. So let's see how we can maybe play with this a little bit. But let's go to elements and let's see if we can find a ribbon that we like. What if I put silver ribbon? Let's see what comes up. I'm going to go with my graphics. Okay, so I'm not quite getting the sort of loop ribbon that I like. Now there's always going to be ribbons that I can change the color and then just make it my own color too. And that might be the easier way to go if I can't find the silver ribbon that I like. No matter of fact, I think that is probably going to be the easiest way to go. Let's pick something that we know will pop up. Orange ribbon. There we go. So we were just on orange ribbon because we did that one before. So I'm going to see if I can find an orange ribbon that I like. So here's one and this one does let me change the color. So I could go ahead and, you know, theoretically, boom, make that a 
nice silver ribbon. Let's see if I find any other ribbons that I like that I can change the color on. I like this one here is also nice. So it also kind of gives me that look there where I can change the color. See which one of these looks best for what I'm doing. Here's another one, but I do want a more symmetrical design. So I am looking for something that is more symmetrical for this. This one looks pretty much the exact same as that one. Okay, that doesn't look any good. Okay, you know, I think we're just going to go ahead and go with maybe, I really like them both. I'm trying to pick which one I think is going to look best with the design. I like that this one is a little bit narrower. Oh, I like them both. Oh, okay. Executive decision. We're just going to go here. Um, and so we're going to start with a ribbon where I can go ahead and change the color. And so I'm going to make that nice and big central. I'm going to go ahead and take this top um, wording and we're going to curve it. So I'm going to go to effects. I'm going to curve. I don't want it to be curved too much. I can play with this a little bit more later. We're going to go with maybe a light curve there for now. doesn't really matter what the color is, but let's go ahead and just match all of our kind of grays together. So there's our grays. I might even go with more of a lighter gray, almost a white color, because I do want it to pop on the dark background. So maybe we'll go with the lighter color for all of them. And now what I'm going to do is some flourishes. So... I saw this in another design that I really liked and I thought, oh, that looks really cool. Let's go ahead and find a way to make that work. So I'm going to go up to elements and now I'm going to go ahead and do searches for flourishes. And so flourish. And so we can do any kind of pattern that we like. I liked some of the more florally looking ones. Something like this looked really nice. Um, and so I'm going to get a few of these that I think look really cool. And we're going to see if we can sort of fill in this space in a way that looks really elegant. Um, and so lots of different elegant looking things. So for example, if I was to take this, make it that nice gray color, flip it upside down, 180, shrink it down, it could fit in here. And so you kind of get an idea of what I'm looking at here with like something like that. That one is, it's a bit much, but you get the idea. So you're just going to start playing around with filling this space with different flourishes. Now you want to make sure that they all kind of go together. So I'm like, I like this style and there's a lot of them under magic recommendations. So that might work out really well for me. I'm going to have to make it lighter in color so that I can see it. But let's go ahead. Now I'm going to start designing on one side. I want it to be symmetrical. So what I'm looking for is whatever I put on one side, I want to put exactly on the other. So I'm going to fill one side first. And then what I'll probably end up doing is saving it. And then I can go ahead and fill the other side. So let's see how I want to do this. Which of these looks pretty? I like this one. Let's see if I can change the colors. So, right now I'm trying to find a way to make this work how I like it. That's pretty, but not quite what I'm wanting. This one is a little bit different. So as you can see, I've just sort of been playing and combining these. And so it might take you a little bit of time. The cool thing about this is once you get everything the way that you want it, this can be scaled out pretty easily. So really it is just that initial time investment. So I put some flourishes here I kind of like. I might add some extra things like some little dots um, uh, or some little hearts to kind of fill it in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the same thing on this side. Now I don't really like this centerpiece here. I do want a centerpiece, but it doesn't really look like it's flowing very well with this. Um, 
So I'll find something else. But let's just say I like this. So maybe I want to add something like little circles. Now here's where I might need to zoom in quite a bit. So you got these itty bitty little circles. They work really well at, at kind of filling space. So what you can do is stick little circles like that. And I can make them so that they get progressively smaller. I can put them in a line or I can just have them sort of be individual circles in different areas. And so lots of ways that we can use these to sort of fill spaces a little bit. And I can even, again, I can zoom in so I can see a little bit better. And I can make some circles that maybe start off a little bit bigger and then go smaller or smaller and then go bigger. So let's say I wanted to sort of try to fill the space a little bit. And I start with that circle. And when I'm working with really small spaces, I may just use the arrow keys on my keyboard to try to move things so that I get them lined up the way that I want. But I make another circle and I'm gonna make this one a little bit smaller than that one. And so we'll make them sort of consecutively smaller still. Something there and I'll line it up in a second and then one more and make it even smaller of a circle. And so sometimes some of these look really cool when you start doing those little, like it gets ever so gradually smaller. And so some of those little circles there, you can always add those and play with my arrow keys there. And so there you go. So the big two little circle thing works pretty well there. And if I want it to almost look like it's curving a little bit, I can do that. That looks pretty cool. And I can repeat that anywhere I want if I wanted to, you know, sort of fill in some space. So at this point, again, you're just playing. You Less can be more. So don't feel like you need to go too far out there with some of these, but just adding little bits here and there can certainly help. And remember, we're doing it all on one side so that we can then duplicate it on the other side. And I'll show you how to do that. Oops. If you accidentally move something, don't freak out. Just hit your back button and you can undo it. So it's not a big deal right there. And again, oops, so just playing with some of these things here. Maybe a bigger circle there. Actually, that might be a good place for a heart. I was thinking about adding some hearts in here too. No reason, by the way, we have to stick with circles. Again, if I wanna throw a little heart in here, again, I can. I do still wanna fill in that center part too, but let's go ahead and go with heart. Hmm. Love that one. And go with that light gray color. Shrink it down nice and small. And I can use that to fill in some of these spaces a little bit. And the hearts can be some different sizes and different angles so that I can just sort of fill some spaces. Again, something pretty simple. The heart's going to look the best here. Trying to fill some of that space. That might be a bigger heart. Or maybe a smaller heart. Oh. So, yeah, something like that. That works pretty well. Let me go ahead and zoom out so I can see it. Yeah, so I like the way that those flourishes all look pretty nice. And I just want to fit a center piece in here. So I might do a little bit more searching for some centers that I like, but let me do a little bit more. And I'm looking for something that kind of looks flowy like that, but like it'll fill up more of a triangular space. Okay, 
So I like the way that that looks. I like the flourishes on the outside. I like the centerpiece. So, so far, I actually think that this looks really nice. So what I would want to do then to get the same thing on the other side, because I don't want to go bit by bit and redo every single one of these and try to make it symmetrical. That would really take a long time. And even if you group this all together, by the way, it won't flip it all as one piece. It'll still want to flip each piece individually. And so that's sort of a pain in the butt too. The easiest thing to do would be to just save this by itself. And so what I'm gonna show you here is I'm gonna duplicate this page. And now that it's duplicated, I'm going to move everything that isn't the side piece out of the way. And I'm gonna save just this side piece as one piece. And then, and it's in the page exactly where I want it to. So then all I have to do once I save it will be to flip the whole thing as one and put it on the other side. So I'm just gonna put flourish. By the way, you have to make sure it's the color that you want initially, or we can do a clipping mask of one color over everything. So just little things to think about. Um, so flourish, because once it's saved, we're not gonna be able to change the color of each of these things. So transparent background, and we just want page two, and I'm gonna hit done. Perfect. And then I'm gonna pull it up in my uploads. So here it is in my uploads and I can click on that and close this. And so now what you would see if I lined up my pages would be, crop that down now. If I pulled it all the way out, it's going to completely cover the original design. So there's my duplicate and there is my perfectly covered one. So all I have to do now is take this top one, hit flip, oops, another sale, and go ahead and flip this horizontal. And so now what you can see is I have that mirrored image. And so that is perfect. And so it's that mirrored image that I'm now going to move up onto this one. Now I can go ahead and crop it down from the top and the bottom. So it's a little easier to work with, but I'm gonna keep this sort of square part here cause that's how I know I'm gonna line it up right in the page. So I'm just gonna take this. And if I line it up right in the corner, Boom, you can see how that looks. And so now what I've got is that perfectly symmetrical look. And so that looks really cool, really nice. I like it. Again, you won't be able to change the color on this. So once you've saved it, you gotta make sure you save it the color you want. Now, one way that you could do this if you wanted to scale this out and make it easy would be just to put a clipping mask of whatever color you want over the whole thing. So I could easily say I wanted to change this for any other holiday or any other, sorry, color. I could change the wording and then just put a clipping mask on the entire thing of whatever color I want using Photo P. And I have lots of videos on how to do clipping masks in Photo P. So it would be really easy to do to scale that out. And so the hardest part was just coming up with all of these flourishes and once I have them being able to flip it over so that I fill the whole thing and now it's again easy to scale out and so that looks pretty cool I like it I think it looks good if I really want to make it Parkinson's -y, I can probably find a way to get a nice kind of what did I say red tulip right here in the middle so let's see what they have here sometimes you can just go ahead and put in Parkinson's and see if they actually um have awareness month stuff and no that all looks well there's a silver ribbon right there there you go silver ribbon um yeah not loving that let's go with red tulip <laughs> and i'm pretty sure it's the red tulip but i will go ahead and double check real quick so i'm over on my parkinson's page i've got yes it's a red tulip is what i'm looking for so back over here lots of cool red tulips i can use any one of these might look cool. Um, I do want it to look like it goes. I mean, so one thing I could do. Okay. So I will admit I spent quite a bit of time playing with this. Um, I looked at a lot of different uh, tulips and different ways that I thought I could incorporate this and, and make it actually kind of look like it went. And this is what I came up with. So I liked more of this art style, flat 
tulip because it went with the design. So I couldn't do this sort of flat design and then put some sort of like 3D type of tulip on it. I needed it to look a little bit more abstract so that it looked like it went with the flourishes there. So I do like the way that this turned out. And, and so I think it actually does look good and it works specifically for Parkinson's. And of course you can always remove the tulip if you wanted to use this for any other type of design, but there really wasn't much to it. I just had to go through and look at different things and then pick in place. And so there wasn't a lot of technique involved necessarily in this. Um, but so here is my design. It looks nice. And then from this point, like I said, if I had wanted to do a clipping mask or anything I could, if I wanted to almost put a silver clipping mask over it to give it more of a silvery essence, I could. Um, I'm going to leave it like this, pretty simple um, gray, and I think that that's going to work well. Again, I can change sort of the colors of any of these. Sometimes I've seen it where the gray pops out. And so where they take this text here, and let's say I did this in white, just to make it pop a little bit more for the gray and I did this in white I could put I wear gray and then the gray pops out for and then Parkinson's awareness I could put back in white if I wanted to just so I could get a little extra colors in there and so lots of different ways that you could go ahead and you know obviously play with this if I had wanted to I could have left some of these hearts white too just to have a little bit of white flourishes in it, it really depends whether or not I'm going to put this design on you know something um for example a dark shirt or a light shirt because this is such a light gray I wouldn't put it on a white shirt because it wouldn't pop but if it was a brightly colored design then I might put it on a white shirt and if that's the case then I really don't want to have any white text because then that wouldn't work um but if it's something like this where I know I'm going to put it on a dark shirt, well, then it might be a good idea to go ahead and change some of these little flourishes here to white. And so I can do that pretty easily. And then I could do the same technique again would be to just save those flourishes and put it here the same way I did. Because again, on this photo, I can't change the color. So I can only change the color on this side. Um, and so if I want to change some of these little flourishes here, I would have to do it on this side and then save it all again like I did, which is no big deal. I could totally do that and just letting you know what your options are. Um, and so some of that looks kind of cool too. So I can, I can do that. I can throw some of the whites in there. I can make some of the dots white. I can make all of the dots white. Let's see what that would look like. Sometimes I'd have to play with the design for a while to kind of figure out how it looks the best. And then once I've got it the way I want it, then it's great. You can scale it out. It looks really nice, but there may be a little bit of playing initially to get that first design just the way that you want it. So don't be afraid to try some different things. Um, let me get rid of that side entirely. Don't be afraid to try different things and to, to you know, fiddle with it and see what sort of looks good. So I might even do this like half in that light gray. And if I wanted some different shades of gray too, again, I could have made some of these dots, maybe instead of white, make the dots like more of that darker gray. So just so I get a little bit different shading. So maybe instead of the white dots, I go with darker dots and see what that looks like. And see, does that look any better or does that change anything? Maybe I have to make the dark dots even darker still so that I really get that contrast, but then I still want it to show up on a dark shirt. So if I get too many of those dark dots, they may not show up on the dark shirt as much. Um, so I actually think that they probably looked a little bit better in white. Yeah, so I think that that's going to look the best. So again, I'm going to do the same thing that I did down here. And that's just going to be, of course, I could have just done it down here too. That would have been easier to just change all of the little spots to white, save it, and then, um, and then I can flip it and put it up top. So give me one second, I'll get that done. Okay, so here's my duplicate copy here. I'm going to go ahead and flip that one horizontal. I'm going to do this, 
and pull it all the way across so that it is the right size. So there it is, right size, right place. And then from there, I can then crop it down and we'll just go ahead and oops, move it up top here. And boom. There we go. So that's my design. Took a little bit of doing, but I like I like where it's at. It looks pretty good in the page. I don't feel like I really need to move anything. And it looks pretty ready to go. I might with the tulip. Not sure if I love that green color. I may still play with the green color a little bit. I could pull the gray into it a little bit there. Again, not entirely sure I love that, but that's an option. And I could. Something like that. Yeah, I could make the green gray to really make it look like it goes a little bit more, or I could go the other way and make the gray white so that it looks like that a little bit more. And so different ways I could go with it. I do think it looks better darker versus white with the darker gray to get that to pop since it is gray. I still want it to show up on a dark shirt. Okay. I'm happy with it. I can fiddle with this for a long time, but there you go. I'm pretty happy with this design. So I'm going to go ahead and just write, I wear gray for um, Parkinson's. Okay. I wear gray for Parkinson's. That's good right there. It is ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and download. It's a PNG. It's a transparent background. I only need page one for this so I can go ahead and hit done and hit download. And it is now ready to go on a nice um, dark colored shirt or sweatshirt, um, any kind of clothing it says I wear. So you probably wouldn't put it on a phone case unless you change the wording here. Um, but you can still use the basic design. You could get rid of the wording and just use the design. And so lots of different ways we can go with this. I just sort of wanted to show you guys that style and that technique and how you can go ahead and do it. And, and so if you have any questions about this, drop it in the comment section below. I try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. Again, sorry, it's been kind of a long video, a lot of rambling, but I do want to give you guys all the details. If you have any video requests, you can drop those in the comment section below as well. I will try to add you to my list. I hope you guys are, you know, preparing for your quarter two. And so I hope this will help you start thinking about quarter two and um, really, you know, expand your, expand your portfolio. So take care. That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.